Don't you hate it when games don't let you take something? I, that's not really realistic. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 RPGs with realistic loot mechanics. Now, realistic is a relative term, obviously. In terms of hauling around 100 different swords in your inventory, that's not really realistic. We're focusing on games that are realistic in that if something is there, you can take it. There's not really a lot of games with realistic inventory mechanics. We're focusing exclusively on the loot here. So without any further ado, starting off at number 10 is Fallout 4. Set in the post-apocalypse, it only makes sense that you're a scavenger in the Fallout series. Taking stuff either from ruins or dead enemies, it makes perfect sense for a game like this. And they really let you go nuts with it. To a certain extent, looting has always been pretty realistic in the Fallout series. If a guy's shooting at you with a machine gun, you can get that machine gun, assuming you can get it from him him, meaning you can kill him. If there's a guy wearing armor, you can take that armor. And in the newer Bethesda games, if there's junk lying around, you can pick that up too. Fallout 4 takes all this looting to the next level though with its extensive crafting systems. That loot goes further and does more, but the looting has kind of been with the series since the beginning. Being able to carry the amount of stuff you eventually collect doesn't make a lot of sense, but the fact that you can pick it up is very satisfying, even if it eventually becomes kind of tough to sift through all the junk you accumulate. At number 9 is Kingdom Come Deliverance. Like Fallout, Kingdom Come works under a what-you-see-is-what-you-get system. You kill a bandit, you can take all the stuff he's wearing, including his weapon. What makes the game different, however, is the more specific emphasis on realism. They make it pretty much possible to take anything off a dead enemy, but in the game, all that stuff is heavy, so you can only carry so much. It does actually figure in inventory as a factor in terms of realism. Like I said, there aren't a lot of games that do this, but that implies there are some. Without a horse to dump some stuff on, you're pretty much forced to abandon a ton of valuable stuff just because you have no way of taking it with you. The game goes out of its way to make the kind of loot people have somewhat more realistic, like random villagers will have different things in their inventory compared to noble lords. In that way, it's partially randomized, but generally people don't have things on them that they wouldn't realistically have. This is a thing in the Bethesda RPGs as well, but it is a lot more immersive in this game. Of course, being set in 15th century Bohemia, the loot table that's available is a little more limited than you'd find in most other games. There's not a ton of really interesting stuff to be found here, but in some ways that does help with the immersion. Of course, it's not perfect, like how you can use a lockpick while riding a horse, but the way loot works in the game is at least more realistic than what you'd see in other RPGs. At number 8 is Rust. When people say hardcore survival simulator, probably the biggest thing I associate with that genre is that you lose everything when you die. If you're playing on a PvP server in one of those games, at any moment another player can come rolling by, slap you around, and take everything you've got from your inventory. This was a more common staple of early MMOs, like Ultima Online, where dying could have huge consequences. You could potentially lose dozens of hours of progress if someone came by and killed you. A lot of other games that came later kind of neutered PvP to make it so that you only lose a little bit from your inventory when you die, or even nothing at all, but realistically at least, it makes sense that if you die, the killer can just rob you blind, because that's what would happen if it really happened. It can be brutally difficult, but it's also really satisfying to get the drop on someone and take everything they got. Rust is hardly the only game with a system like that these games. It's a major feature in some of the biggest games like Player Unknown Battlegrounds or even Fortnite. So this entry is kind of a catch-all for all the survival games. You can make an entire list out of just those types of games, and the mechanic's not even exclusive to it. Like I said, Battlegrounds and Fortnite. These things would get pretty repetitive, though. So these games deserve a mention, and Rust is probably one of the most brutal ones out there. So here's something a little different. Hitman is a series that no one would really consider an RPG. But when you look at them, particularly the recent trilogy, they do fit the criteria. You can take pretty much anything that would be useful, and anytime you kill or knock out somebody, you can take everything they've got, most obviously their clothes. That's the big one, that you can choke somebody out and take their clothes is probably the most realistic, if not silly thing. If they have a gun though, they drop it, you can take that as well. They have a, like a special access key card or something 
something like that, they drop that as well. So if you see somebody open a door you can't get into, you know that if you take that person out, you get the key. It's all very intuitive and easy to understand, and that's a big reason why the assassinations in these games feel so satisfying. Sure, it doesn't make much sense how everyone seems to wear clothes that fit Asian 47 perfectly, but it feels good to know that if you want to sneak around as a guard, you can just choke out a guard and take his clothes. If you want to sneak into a lab, take out a scientist, take his coat and key card. It's another game where if you see somebody carrying something, you can pretty much take it. And that consistency is a big reason why these games are so fun. At number six is Dead Rising. Like Hitman, this is kind of an out there example, but it really does fit. Sure, you can't actually carry a whole lot of stuff, which is itself kind of realistic actually, but the amount of stuff you can pick up and use is pretty huge. Dead Rising is of course not the most realistic game of all time. It's about surviving in a zombie apocalypse and thus far, nothing like that's ever happened. But the level of realism where you have to use improvised weapons and figure out ways to handle things without the the ideal conditions are a big part of the game. Sure, you get a gun once in a while, but the ammo runs out and then you have to find something else. Thankfully, in most of the games, you're literally in a mall where you can find just about anything. You can pick up like a tennis racket at a sports shop, a useless toy weapon at a toy store, power tools at a construction site, exotic blades at a knife shop, the list goes on. These games definitely play up the sandbox aspects of themselves. They let you take basically everything because it's a lot more fun that way. Most of the stuff you pick up is practically useless for fighting the hordes of the undead, but sometimes it's just fun to throw like bags of popcorn at enemies or use a toy blaster on them. It doesn't do anything, but it's fun to screw around. This also goes into play with outfits. Like if there's a clothing store, there's probably a bunch of outfits you could switch into. And unlike Hitman, you're not limited at all. You want to put on children's clothing or like a lady's dress, there's nothing stopping you. Rarely serves a purpose, but it does make the game a lot more charming. And number five is The Surge 2. And I was thinking of mentioning Dark Souls on this list, but in a lot of ways, they actually really limit the stuff that you get. Armor worn by enemies is sometimes dropped when you kill them, but not all the time. Boss weapons, which are just laying there, can't be obtained unless you use a boss soul to create the weapon. So while the Souls games do give you some way to get most armor sets or weapons, it's not exactly realistic. The Surge and The Surge 2, on the other hand, do something different. Instead of making it so pieces of armor drop randomly after you kill an enemy, you can collect armor pieces by literally chopping them off enemy. It's actually one of the more unique gameplay mechanics of the series. Most of the human enemies you fight are wearing some kind of power armor that's basically fused onto them. So if you want to get it, you have to damage them enough that they become vulnerable and then use a finisher on whatever body part you want to collect. You want a helmet, you got to chop off the head. You want leg armor, chop off the leg, and so on. You can even get the weapon they're using if you chop off the arm that they're holding it with. Of course, it's realistic, so it's not immediately simple either. The piece you obtain are always broken after you chop them off, so if you collect multiple parts, you have to craft a working replacement. It makes sense though, armor in the series isn't really meant to be swapped out, so yanking them off of a body damages them because there's like supposed to be unique exoskeleton. Why you can't just take everything you want off their corpse, I have no idea, but it's still an interesting idea. What this boils down to is that if you see an enemy with a cool weapon or armor you want, it's possible to get it, it just doesn't happen through random drops. If a guy has a weapon or armor piece, you can get it by chopping it off. And number four is Stalker. The Stalker games are basically hardcore Fallout. They're both RPGs set in apocalyptic environments. Well, Fallout is the literal apocalypse. Stalker, just the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Uh, but they have some pretty generous loot systems. And while in Fallout, they don't take too long to get you into hoarder mode because your inventory gets stuffed with ammo and weapons. In Stalker, you're basically just scrounging by for much longer. So this is a game where you can loot everything off dead enemies. Any weapons, ammo, healing items, their free game. You can't necessarily rob them of their armor, so in that regard it's limited, but everything else, go for it. While Fallout makes it so you can unrealistically load up on thousands of bullets with no downsides, in Stalker those bullets have weight. So even something as simple as how much ammo you want to take matters in this game. So managing your inventory is absolutely essential for survival. For most games, being able to loot everything makes the game easier, but in Stalker, it actually makes it more difficult. And it's still incredibly necessary if you want to survive.
And number three is Neverwinter Nights, Dan Baldur's Gate, Nicewind Dale, etc. I mean, while we're putting Neverwinter on the name of this point, it's basically regarding every Dungeons & Dragons Bioware game. Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, and Neverwinter Nights all made it so you could loot everything off of an enemy. If they had a good looking weapon, you kill them, it's yours, they had some sweet armor, same. This kind of system was a staple of those games, almost all of them had it to at least some degree. What's different about these games is that there wasn't really a lot of random loot. Basically, what an enemy or NPC had was what they had, and that's it. It added a level of immersion to things, even if you spent the entire game at a bird's eye view. Because of this, you ended up leaving a lot of stuff on the battlefield. Inventory space is super limited, and when your enemy is packed with armor and weapons, you're going to fill up really quickly. Of course, because they use D&D rules, most of the weapons you find are pretty janky anyway. Magic items are pretty rare, and those are the things that are valuable up to a certain point, so taking on a tough enemy usually meant your reward was taken to special armor and weapons. The downside to this kind of system is that things don't really change. All the loot you find is exactly the same every time you play, so it can sometimes limit how you build your characters. But if you want to play some old school RPGs with realistic loot systems, you really can't go wrong with these games. And number two is Outward. When it comes to loot mechanics, this RPG is about as hardcore as it gets. Equal parts survival simulator and RPG, Outward isn't exactly the most impressive game visually, but what it does have is an interesting and very dangerous world to explore. When it comes to inventory and loot mechanics in an RPG, this is actually considered one of the most realistic by a lot of people, and it is definitely one of the most challenging at very least. There's a lot going on here. Um, items degrade, you got limited inventory, but survival means collecting a lot of stuff stuff out in the wilderness as well. You gotta be careful how you're holding items. You got a separate pouch, you got a backpack, and if you fill that stuff with stuff, it can slow you down in combat. But if you're careful, it's possible to drop it before combat, which makes it much easier to move around and dodge enemy attacks. Of course, on top of that, your actual inventory is limited. Enemies are really dangerous and dying can lead to a big loss. Just the simple act of traveling around can be dangerous because you have to stay hydrated and fed. So just going out into the wilderness can be a tense experience when supplies start getting low. It's an all-around unique and challenging game that takes a lot of time to really get into, but it's a fantasy RPG that's a lot more realistic than most in a lot of ways. And finally, at number one is Skyrim, and really the Elder Scrolls games in general. We had to end it here just because Skyrim, although hardly the most realistic game out there, especially compared to some of the more hardcore games we've mentioned so far, it is an iconic game and there is so much loot to find and stuff to get in this game, and it's all just lying around for you to get. Even stuff you can't normally pick up, like chairs and dead bodies, can at least be moved around if you want. Skyrim's the biggest and most notable example. I mean, pretty much everybody knows Skyrim, but basically all the Elder Scrolls games have a pretty realistic loot system. Anything that someone has, you can take it, either by killing them or even just stealing it from them. With enough strength, you can build a massive collection of stuff, and clearing out just one bandit den can leave you with multiple suits of armor in, in your inventory, and the fact that the game even lets you take all of it is great. It's not the first game to do it, obviously, but it's by far the most iconic and most well-known game that lets you loot basically everything you want. The world's quite big, obviously there's tons of towns and houses all over the place and there is so much stuff to take and it's even important in this series because there's an entire guild of thieves you can join when it comes to fantasy sandbox world skyrim even after all these years is hard to top and that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.